Welcome to Buck and Jack, I'm Adrian and today we are in West London. We're off to go have a chat with Stephen Forzi of Grubal Forzi. They're launching a new watch and today I'm able to get hands on with it. Stephen, thanks so much for spending some time oh, with me. Thank you. I will be honest, Grubal Forzi watches are slightly out of the realm of what uh, I usually talk about. Uh -huh. So okay. could you well, do a, fine. a quick introduction? In so um, Robert uh, Grubal and myself are both watchmakers. I grew up uh, in the UK and uh, went to watchmaking school or horology school in London in right. the 80s. Uh, I specialized in uh, watch restoration for five years in London and then uh, I had a chance to go to Switzerland in 1992. Robert's uh, from France originally, French watchmaking school. He did uh, prototyping uh, before uh, going to work in a, a watch company making complicated movements, mechanical right. movements. That's where we met in 92 and through the 90s worked on a bunch of really interesting projects. But in 99, with the new millennium, Robert and I felt that, um, uh, above all, the, the hand finishing could be taken further. Right. And then we, we quickly thought that we had uh, some ideas which we could develop. So um, we were started a, a small uh, R&D setup called CompliTime. Not well known, but uh, we work for, have worked for a number of uh, big companies and, mm -hmm. uh, over the years and uh, some interesting projects. So Complete Time enabled us to, to, to live, you know. And on the side of that, we started to develop our first idea, Double Tourbillon 30 Degree, right. being a new generation of tourbillon mechanism for the wristwatch. Um, we specialized in that piece uh, with uh, hand finishing as a decorative angle and seeking to, to get back to some of the more ancient or historic ancestral techniques of hand finishing. It took us four and a half years to develop that piece, but uh, we were able to launch in 2004. Mm -hmm. And uh, so since then, we've been able to continue building uh, a team in uh, Switzerland and um, to, to add to our collection different innovations, seven what we call fundamental inventions, right. uh, three in the tourbillon, uh, others are around the uh, the power source, the oscillator, the different systems, uh, a mechanical computer for our perpetual calendar. And so um, we've been very fortunate to, to build up a team developing those uh, systems and mechanisms. And today we're very excited. We've just been able to showcase the result of a, a long project mm -hmm. um, which we've been working on. handmade one is um, coming back to the roots of our profession. As I right. mentioned, I'd restored antique watches, having to remake uh, parts for, for certain antique pieces. Robert had done prototyping work. But when we started for Global 4 c we couldn't find enough people or virtually anybody who could make these type of parts traditionally. So right. that means with hand-operated uh, tools and uh, equipment. But um, we realized that these skills were endangered, so it was something we wanted to address. So in our main collection, we've used CNC, and we've always been very open and clear about that, mm -hmm. to make raw parts which are precise, and that way we can focus on building the hand finishing, which has taken a long time. There was so much to rediscover and revive in the way of these techniques. But the hand making part is something that's uh, come, been seemed possible more recently, following uh, also a raised awareness uh, on the part of the watch community. You know, over the years, the knowledge has increased, social media, mm -hmm. uh, internet, we have uh, wider availability, and people's interest in mechanical watches has continued to grow. So this is something which comes back to meet the values of, of what we want to do at Global 4C and in our, in our watchmaking. So through that, side of the seeing that there was a sensitivity to that outside we also saw from in our team 
a few individuals who put, came forward and said, I think I could hand make some parts, can we do a project around that? Um, having been inspired also by a, a foundation project that we did, um, where we had sought to draw attention to the loss of these skills. So, so with these uh, elements, Robert and I felt that it was a, really a, uh, there was a milestone moment there where perhaps we could imagine remaking uh, by hand a substantial number of the components of the watch. And uh, as we went, uh, as we've gone along with the project, we realized that we could arrive at a level where we could actually qualify it as handmade. Cool. To, to be able to do so uh, and qualify it, this is handmade uh, in terms of watchmaking, we've been able to define the criteria. So right. the first criteria, any component part that we're calling handmade is made on hand-operated machines or tools um, without numerical uh, computer assistance. And the only, th only concession is to have an electric motor to drive a cutter or to turn the workpiece. So that's criteria number one. Number two, we already already have in our collection, that's the hand finishing, a substantial component. In our collection, that represents some four and a half months man hours on average. So it gives an idea of the volume of work to build 100 timepieces a year that's is incredible. significant. Yeah. Third element is uh, we also have in our collection is the built by one watchmaker. So each movement uh, must be built from A to Z. Uh, by one watchmaker from the different parts. Right. And the final element was to say, well, for handmade, where are we going to put the bar? What's the, what's the level? So we decided it needed to be at least 90%. Okay. And uh, in this piece, we estimate that we've arrived at 95%. And it's easier for me to explain to you what we didn't make than mm -hmm. what we did make. So we didn't make by hand the mainspring. Right the jewels of the movement. We didn't hand make the sapphire crystal, the case gaskets because it's water resistant, or the spring bars. But otherwise, everything else we can see here is handmade. And there's one important uh, element that we've uh, perhaps left out of that list, which seem, could seem surprising, and that is actually the balance spring itself. Right. And there, interestingly, uh, over the last uh, number of years, five, six years, we've been uh, working to understand the balance wheel system of the mechanical watch ourselves in-house. So we made our own in-house balance wheels, and we now have the possibility to make in an artisanal way, really handmade, uh, the balance spring itself from raw material which we obtained, and we've been able to then roll, draw, and uh, complete the different processes to get to the final finished spring. And this, wow. is, this is fantastic, you know, it's, uh, because for us as watchmakers, we want to understand the mechanism. So we want sure. to go into that, and the only way to do it is to make it yourself. So making the balance spring itself and the, the balance wheel system is uh, a tall order in any uh, watchmaking sense, in, mm -hmm. in a volume sense. But to be able to art make them artisanal, handmade, uh, piece by piece, this is, uh, this is something which is... Uh, I think uh, you know it's a it's a milestone element That's in brilliant. bringing this piece together. The very nature of the handmade piece meant that actually we we couldn't just take one of our existing calibers and make that by hand, because the very techniques here uh, there are different elements that you have to think about. So it was a very collaborative project between the uh, the watchmaker or the machinist making the parts, the movement designer, the uh, watchmaker who would build it and the uh, hand finishing team with their expertise. So it was pooling all of these elements together. And for this first piece, so the 272 components in the movement, but it meant we had to aim to have 800 components uh, to be able to finish with one set for the movement. Right. Because when you're doing a handmade approach, it can go wrong any time. It's, uh, it's a very random kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. it's totally uh, human and pilot driven, so uh, the smallest mistake can uh, render a, a component unusable and sure. defective. So, so these are the challenges that uh, came together in creating this piece and then bringing uh, an unusual uh, techniques of finishing here, no uh, galvanic electroblating on the plates or bridges, 
uh, and a, a very unusual textured finish here, yeah. which is uh, hand textured by um, by intersecting different sort of geometric form, but it's not really it's not regular at all. It's a very uh, and yet it gives a very interesting uh, backdrop on that main plate. It's quite mesmerising, yeah. Yes, yeah, set against the uh, set against the bridges with a, a matte lapped finish again. Different working, working different textures and techniques gives us a really beautiful uh, final result there. I think it's superb. And what uh, I'd really enjoy um, the amount of space you have inside. Mm, thank it's, you. It, yeah. it, it, it's, uh, it's sparse, but mm, there's, there's a lot of yeah, complexity yeah. within that. It's, well, it's, that's Robert's overseeing the creative design side, and sure. uh, then I'm working more with the technical side behind, as we always do. And uh, it's true that uh, polished flanks there, and uh, these are elements which uh, help to reinforce that, that effect. Uh, and um, it was important for us to have a, a certain, certain volume, a certain architecture to showcase the mechanism, really, mm -hmm. uh, in a very authentic way. Amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. So how many of these do you think you'll be making a, a year? Well, it's, uh, it's a very inexact process, because uh, it's not guided by, uh, by machines. Um, but we do hope that we will be able to make something like two examples uh, a year wow. um, and to uh, continue to build the expertise. Uh, it's only this type of uh, work is only by practicing it that you can uh, build on that expertise and uh, go further. That's incredible. Great. Thanks so much for your Thank time. You. I really Thank appreciate it. Thank you very it. much. Thanks. Thanks so much for Thanks. bringing this to, to show us. It's My pleasure. Gorgeous. Pleasure.